Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be what the narcissist never thought you would do. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So, the narcissist, there are many things they never thought you would do, but this video is about the number one thing that they never thought you would do. Before I reveal what that is, let's go back in time when you were with the narcissist. What kind of relationship that was and what it did to you and how you have changed forever. First of all, you did not know that narcissism existed when you were inter entered, when you have entered that relationship with the person who turned out to be a toxic narcissistic individual. You didn't know what it was because you weren't taught this in school and you didn't have the education and you thought that you were just chalking up that relationship to a poor day after a poor day after a poor day, meaning that that person just had some challenges and maybe they were playing the victim to you or peppering you with abuse, but you couldn't wrap your head around it. So you kept on working for the relationship, working for the narcissist. You were having your resources become depleted, like I mentioned so frequently on the channel, which include your time, money, energy, effort, love, empathy, your set status, your social circle, everything about your finances, your health, everything was taking a hit, hit left, right, and center. And why that was taking a hit is because you were giving to a fault. You were contributing to a relationship that was headed nowhere. You were in a canoe, if you will, paddling upstream. And the other person in the canoe, the narcissist, they were trying to puncture holes in the canoe so it would capsize. Why? Because they had another canoe lined up right behind yours that they were gonna jump onto as soon as they made sure that your canoe did not continue to float. All these examples and more are what the narcissistic abusive cycle, what it is, what it encompasses. It encompasses a relationship where one person is giving everything they possibly can and more. And the other person, the narcissist, they are taking and they're taking and taking. And when they're done, they wanna take more. This is how they go on throughout life from person to person, place to place business to business, relationship to relationship, blowing up everything that they touch. Now you may be saying, Andrew, you're being a little dramatic here. I'm not, I'm telling you firsthand. The narcissist does not think like you. They don't reason like you. They can't introspect like you. They're not accountable like you. They don't wanna grow. All they wanna do is leech on to other people and take what the other people have, crumble them up like a sheet of paper after the resources have become depleted and then move on to the next source of supply. Now, the new supply, just a side note here, is a person or something, usually it's a person, and they, the new supply will be providing a different lifestyle than you offered the narcissist. But again, remember, at one point you were the new supply and the narcissist was running from a former relationship into your arms and then when they got what they wanted from you, now they're gonna run into another person's arms who, they, who this person does not have the education or the wisdom or they are a toxic narcissistic person themselves or they are a recycled individual, another former relationship, wink, wink, a person from their old high school or something that the narcissist just wants to use again. Now, all of these things contribute to the narcissistic abusive cycle that you were a part of. And remember, the cycle will always go around and around and around, and there is only one constant in the narcissistic abusive cycle. It is not you, it is the narcissist. They know that they are trapped in their state of mind. They know they're trapped in their anxiety riddled existence. They know that they shape shift. They know that they wear a mask to manipulate people so often, not always, but so often. And they know that they're not genuine or authentic. What they, all they wanna do is make themselves feel better than you. And that's why many times when you would go home and when you were existing, not living, existing with the narcissist, let's say under the same roof, you would go home and you would open the front door and you didn't know what to expect, Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde. That's on purpose. It's the roller coaster of emotions. You could never quite put your finger on what kind of relationship you were a part of. And then what happened? Well, I'll tell you one, one thing that happened is eventually you Googled something or typed something in a search engine like spouse won't talk to me or verbal abuse or something. And you got that needle in a haystack. You found your first light bulb moment. You were on the road of discovering not only who you would become, but what the narcissist actually is. Now, one thing the narcissist did not think you would ever figure out is just this. It's that they are a narcissist and they did not ever deduce that you were smart enough to put two and two together and to do research and to do your due diligence just the same way they did their research and due diligence on you in the beginning of the relationship. Let's go back there for a minute. Remember, when you met the narcissist, most likely they were sizing you up. They were trying to figure out what made you tick. They were trying to figure out what your 
assets were, what your resources were, what your hopes, dreams, aspirations, goals were, where you had come from, your former ro romantic relationships or your, your relationships with your parents or siblings. And again, they wanted to do all the homework and research and reconnaissance about you. And then they said to themselves one day, yep, this person will do, the person wh who is you, they'll do as my next resource, my next fuel source, the, the engine that will drive me for a period of time, maybe a couple weeks, months, years, or decades, but I will glom onto this person. I'll have them fall in love th with me if it was a romantic relationship, or I will befriend them and then string that relationship along, whatever they did, but they got close to you and they wanted to continue to pepper you with abuse, pepper you with, pepper you with manipulation, pepper you with not truths about who they really are because they were hiding behind a mask and they knew that. And they knew that each and every day that you stayed in that relationship with them, that your health and your resources would become, uh, it would be deteriorating and diminishing. And they knew that because they had done this over and over and over again. And then again, like I mentioned, one day your resources gave out. Perhaps you were, came down with an illness or perhaps you, your bank account went to zero or you, you lost your job or you had to have a surgery or something. Well, that's when the narcissist usually kicks you to the curb and they discard you and they go on to the other fuel source who has been waiting in the wings virtually throughout your whole life as long as you've known the narcissist. Now, all of these things I'm mentioning, the one thing the narcissist did not think you would do is put yourself back together. This is a pivotal part of the video, so please play it and play it often. Because the narcissist, they knew what they did with you. They knew the abuse that they had administered to you. And they kept on giving that concoction of abuse, administering to you day, daily, weekly, monthly, years or decades. And they also knew that eventually something was going to give. Either you would end the relationship yourself or they would discard you. The third outcome would be you would stay in that zombie-like trance-like state, the narcissistic fog. And if you're there or you were there, you know what I'm talking about, drop comments below. That's where you're existing, you're not living. And you are simply so beaten down, you're an extension of the narcissist. Each and every day you get drained more and more. But what the narcissist didn't think you would do is put yourself back together and heal and process what narcissism is and practice radical acceptance and understand that you are the abundant, beautiful, bright, shining light. It wasn't the narcissist. The narcissist tricked you and trapped you and manipulated you and they had you thinking that you needed them. That's what the trauma bond is. It's where they have taken you so high and so low and pushed you away so far and pulled you back in. You're on that roller coaster of emotions. You can never get your footing because you're always off balance and you, you did not know who you would be encountering whenever you spoke with the narcissist, whether it was texting, email, in person, or however it was, phone call. You could never, you never got stability. There was no, no it wasn't like this. The relationship was topsy-turvy. It took you really high and low. And the narcissist did this on purpose to get you caught up in the trauma bond. Now again, the, the trauma bond is something that you weren't prepared to have happen to you and to exit it. It is one of the most, if not the most challenging experience you'll ever go through on the planet because you weren't taught narcissism in school. You weren't prepared for the trauma bond. You found yourself a shell of yourself and you could not wrap your head around why everything was going sideways. It was going sideways because what you were doing is you were being consumed by the narcissist. You were thinking about them morning, noon, and night. When they would text you, you couldn't answer the phone fast enough. You would drop whatever you were doing and you would reply with a monologue of explanations of what you, are, what you were doing, what you're going to do, and what you will do. And then the narcissist would read the text and they would give you a one or two word answer like, okay, or just the letter K, or great or sometimes they would read the text and they would not even respond to you drop comments if that happened to you and what they would do there is they're completely devaluing you because you just reported back to them what you were doing and what you were supposed to do and you were doing the endless to-do list you were the walking apology you were the unpaid helper etc but you were reporting back to the narcissist because you were caught up in that narcissistic fog or you're caught up in the trauma bond you did not know any better this was exactly on purpose this is where they placed you so when they placed you there, they began to devalue you more and more and more. And the reason why that is, or was, was because they got jaded and bored with you. They already captured you. The thrill was over, the chase was over, the hunt was over. They already had you as their Barbie or Ken doll put up on a shelf and they were gonna take you down and use you or play with you whenever they wanted to or get whatever resources whenever they wanted them from you, then they would put you back up on the shelf. That is why so frequently you were, when you were in these relationships, the narcissist would disappear for hours, for maybe a day, maybe a weekend, who knows? But what were they doing? I'll tell you right now what they were doing. They were getting your replacement or they were with other sources of supply. When I say other sources of supply, it doesn't need to be necessarily romantic. It could be friends. It could be a group that they were a part of. It could be 
uh, traveling. It could be a car. It could be an opportunity. It could be anything. But usually, to be fair, the narcissistic supply is a romantic or is a friend person. It doesn't have to be romance all the time. But it could be a family member, sibling, whomever. But what I'm sharing with you is the narcissist did not think you would do this one thing, which is put yourself back together. Dust yourself off. Pick yourself up by the bootstraps. Figure out what narcissism was, how it affected you for a period of time, and that you needed to save yourself. Because a few things here. One, if you were discarded, my heart goes out to you. If the relationship ended on your terms, my heart still goes out to you because you were with a toxic individual for a period of time, which was the length of the relationship. But having said that, you have conquered or you are conquering something that most people don't go through, which is the narcissistic abusive cycle. That's number one. Number two, you've got that needle in a haystack, just like all the pine needles behind me on the trees or on the ground. You found that one pine needle, that one needle in a haystack, which unlocked your future and it freed you from the toxicity of the narcissistic relationship because the narcissist never wanted you to figure them out. The narcissist never wanted you to heal. They never wanted you to get that light bulb moment. They never wanted you to go down that rabbit hole of exploration, of discovery, of understanding that these people, i.e. the toxic narcissistic individuals, they are not even close to who they claim to be. And they hide behind a mask and they pepper people with abuse and they keep people trapped in that zombie-like trance-like state and they don't, and I repeat, don't want them to escape you did escape. You are now healing, you're learning, you're growing, you're teaching if you can. You are becoming awakened and aware, educated and empowered. And you're understanding that you are the priority. You come first, second and third. It wasn't the narcissist. The narcissist, all they did is hoodwink you and kept you trapped. They did not want you to get that needle to unlock the lock, to escape the narcissistic fog, to heal and ultimately to go no contact, to block them, to delete them, to remove all flying monkeys and people associated with them. Now understand the message. The narcissist never wanted to give you closure. They can't give you closure. They can't give anybody closure because they can't introspect. They can't be accountable. They can't take blame. They think that they do everything perfectly and that they do not make mistakes. Nobody on the planet is perfect. Everybody mis makes mistakes each and every day, including the narcissist. But the narcissist can't handle the fact that they do make mistakes and that they have to be accountable because their tiny little pea brain won't allow them to do that. What their tiny little pea brain does is it continues on an endless loop, which is the narcissistic abusive cycle, which goes around and around and around. And again, as I mentioned, there's only one constant in that cycle, it's them. And they know this. That's why they want to trick people and manipulate them into relationships. And that's why they crumble them up and throw them away on the freeway like a sheet of paper once they get whatever they want. That is why the narcissist doesn't have many long-term friends. That is why the narcissist doesn't have many long-term relationships. That is why many times when the children of the narcissist grow up, they want nothing to do with the, the parent who is the narcissist or their sibling because they figured it out and they don't want to get any more abuse. They don't want to be peppered with manipulation. They've been, they've only, they've heard the victim card so many times, it's a broken record. But eventually, they find that needle in a haystack and they pick themselves up and they dust themselves off and say, wow, that relationship almost took me down for the count, but it didn't. The narcissist failed like they always fail and they will fail at the future relationships. They've certainly failed at past relationships and I can assure you something, they're failing at present relationships right now, wherever they are gallivanting the globe because the narcissist has an insatiable quest for people, for things, for shiny objects, for new sources of supply. They can never ever be satiated. They know it and you know it now. So the one thing or the main and number one thing the narcissist never thought you would do is heal. That is the answer. They did not think you would survive that relationship. They did not think you would ever be able to be strong enough to put yourself back together. They did not think that you were smart enough to deduce who they were. They did not think that you would make it on your own when you were isolated post-discard, perhaps during a pandemic, perhaps during multiple surgeries, perhaps when you had a mountain of credit card debt, when you had no car, when you couldn't even function properly, when there was isolation everywhere, because that's what the narcissist did. They used the smear campaign and your whole support network blew up all around you. And not one person checked in on you. Not one person said, hey, how you doing? Do you wanna grab a coffee and let's see what's going on? No, that's what happens. And that's what happened with me and I'm sure that happened with many of you. This is why the narcissist, this is how, I should say, they go on so simply. They slither away in the middle of the night or they disappear so quickly. Why? Because they took what they could from you. They don't wanna ever sit down, have that cup of coffee and introspect and be accountable. They can't because their little feeble brain won't allow them to do that. 
That is why they're childlike. That is why they're stuck and they're trapped in their own little loop of misery. And they wanted to keep you trapped there too and stuck there. Focus on what I'm sharing with you. Let's say you were discarded. If you were, what happened there? The narcissist took everything from you they possibly could. They went on to the new supply. Yes, they did. That's a fact. On top of that, what did they do? They just left you in the past. Now, every once in a while, perhaps the narcissist may have tried to hoover you. Remember, if you got a hoover, don't accept it. If you, if you didn't get a hoover, God bless you. That's a great thing. That means you're strong, you're healing, and certainly the narcissist has moved on to another source of supply. All these things I'm sharing with you is when you were discarded, think about how low of a period of your life you were in. You were in about the lowest place possible. Maybe you even had to experience the dark night of the soul. Maybe you even considered doing some things that you never thought you would do. But guess what? A funny thing happened along the way. You found the needle in the haystack. You are getting the wisdom. You're applying the tools. You are here in the community. You are here for another day on the planet to pay it forward. You are learning. You're educating yourself. You're understanding that that relationship almost took you down. It didn't. It failed miserably, just like the narcissist always fails. And yes, I'm repeating myself a few times in this video because today is a very special day for many people on the planet who celebrate a certain holiday. And I want to make sure you guys understand that where you are now is not where you were a year ago or two years ago or three years ago or four years ago or even five years ago. These days, these each and every day, week, month, life is dynamic. Things shift. Your energy shifts. The more the more you drown out the narcissist and the less you have to deal with the toxicity of any narcissistic relationship, the stronger you get. Now, again, you're going to have to break the trauma bond if you were caught up in it. And you're going to have to understand that no contact is the path. If you can't go no contact, utilize gray rock, which means just become dull and boring. But understand this message. The narcissist, the one thing they never thought you would do is literally heal. They honestly did not think you would heal because they didn't think you were strong enough. They believed that after all the damage that they peppered you with, that you were so weak, you were so lost, you had no belief, you had no energy, you had no strength, you had no money, you had no support system, you had nothing. They didn't think you'd ever make it. And if you didn't make it, read between the lines, what would they do? Well, that would catapult them into the next relationship and they would, they would say, yeah, you were so weak, you couldn't make it. Everything, all the smear campaign I used on you, it, it was proven to be true because you're not around any longer. I hope you understand that part of the message. Point being, the narcissist didn't want you to heal back then. They don't want you to heal now, and they certainly don't want you to heal in the future. They don't want you to understand exactly what kind of toxic individual they are, but you figured them out, and you're now, you now have boundaries. You no longer are a people pleaser. You now have the, the ability to say the strongest word in the English language, which is no. When you say no to something or someone, you are saying yes to yourself. When you say no to the narcissist, it's like narcissist repellent. They can't handle it. They don't like it. They can't get their way. They will throw rage fits, etc. But that is your superpower. Not only saying the word no, but finding the needle in the haystack and understanding that you had to go through that relationship. It was a lifelong learning lesson. There was no other way. If you did not encounter that toxic narcissistic creature, you would have encountered another one because you had to learn the lesson. And now that you have applied the tools and you're reaching the pinnacle of indifference, the mountaintop of indifference, where you flat out don't care about the narcissist or anybody from that period of time, you say, God bless you. You did a great job. You almost took me down for the count, but you did not. Just stay away from me. Just stay away from me. When you say things like that, it empowers you. It makes you believe not only that that's, that relationship you're a part of, it did almost take you down, but it didn't. And now here you are. You're in the third version of you, the strongest version of you possible, the most galvanized version of you ever known to humankind because you have now taken down a foe called the narcissistic abusive cycle, something you weren't prepared for because you weren't taught it in school, but you've conquered it. You've beaten it. You're now living your best life or you are healing and well on your way to the healing, to the reaching the pinnacle of indifference. Understand the message. The narcissist never thought you would do this one thing. It's heal. And that's exactly what you're doing because that's why you made it this far in the video. Guys, remember, before I close the video out, if you can pay this video forward, share it to somebody who perhaps could use it, do it. If not, play it. Play it often. Understand the narcissist never wanted you to heal. They did not think you ever would, but you are here in the community and you are healing and you are paying it forward. So guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning. No matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. Remember that you are not alone. I love you all. God bless you. Have a great day. Have a great evening, morning, or afternoon. I love you all. God bless you, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Have a great day, guys. Bye.